What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Become a Local Leader. On this episode, we have Kathy Sokolich, one of the authors of the new real estate business book, Becoming a Local Leader. And this book features 23 top producing agent stories who through their story are sharing their strategies on how they grow their business through relationships and referrals in a specific geographic area. So this book was made for the agent who wants to build their business that way versus advertising and buying leads and chasing leads and door knocking and cold calling. So if that's you, if you want to build your business on relationships and referrals in your geo farm, in the area that you live in, you will love this book. And one of the themes that comes up a lot, um, especially in Kathy's chapter, is this theme of authenticity which when you read the book, what I think you'll notice, because I know that's a buzzword out there, is this idea that you as an agent, like Kathy, you need to apply your own personality to your business. You cannot try to copy someone else. You need to apply your style, your hobbies, your interests, the clientele that you work with, the things that you do to grow your business, how you get involved in your community. It should really resonate with you. It's your business. It's your life. You got to be happy while you do it in order to be successful when you're doing it. And that really shows up in Kathy's chapter. She describes what she does for her business to grow her business and why she does it that way. What, what's kind of the makeup of her and her family and her past experiences that get her to do the things that she does in her business. Um, everyone gives value to the community and you'll learn how she does it, but you need to look at that and go, okay, why did she do that? And then, so why will, what, what should I do based on who I am? So I'm really excited for you all to get to know Kathy, um, and learn from her. So I want to thank Kathy for being a part of this book and being on the show. Hello. Thanks. Um, so why don't we just start with you know, the main message, you know, you have a chapter, you explain a lot and you give a lot of tips and tricks and, and ideas, you know, when you th wrote that chapter and you gave, you know, the stuff, what is the main message that you wanted to give agents? What are you hoping they get from, from your story? Yeah. Well, um, I think, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there with authenticity and that you really just need to be true to yourself. And that's kind of how I've lived most of my life and, and done most of whatever I find myself doing, whether it's volunteer work or my friends, um, I'm authentic in everything that I do. And I'm very choosy about what I, what I do um, and make sure that it is important to me. How do you um, figure out what, 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 evolution have you had in learning about yourself you know stay true to yourself well, what, what if I'm an agent I don't even know what is myself how have you figured out yourself and and, and achieved self-awareness I mean that's that's like one of those lifelong um <laughs> journeys. things journeys that we're all going to be taking ourselves uh I don't know if I'll ever truly know uh 100 myself but I mean it was a lot of self-reflection um a lot of saying no to other people and really figuring out why I chose to make decisions that I did. So um, for me, a lot of reading, um, different types of books, uh, therapy is always good to kind of dive into what's important to you and, and why you do the things you do. Strong believer in that. And um, just you know, having really open and honest conversations with your friends and, and your partner, um, I think is really helpful too. Let's um, talk, you talked about that in the book a little bit. And I think it's, I, I know me, I, I am looking for who, what is the book? What is the professional? What is the question that can help me develop? Um, let's start with books. I know you share two um, in okay. the chapter. What have been some of the best books for you and for your business and, and why? Yeah, um, I feel like every book I pick up lately is the book that I was meant to read at that time. Like even now I'm reading one about, it's called Deep Work. So I'm reading that one about how to kind of focus on what you need to get done. Um, one of the ones I mentioned uh, is Atomic Habits. And I've always I, I tend to be a little scattered sometimes. And so really having that step-by-step -step guide, I mean, he literally spells it out 
how to just be better at whatever you're trying to do. Like there couldn't be a better guide of how to change your habits. That one was, was really life-changing. Um, and, a, and another one was, um, I don't know that I mentioned this one in the chapter, but taking the leap by Pima children, just how to change your habits and take, just take deep breaths and not to be reactive to your world around you. So much of real estate is really your, your own personal mindset and how you handle everything that comes at you, whether it's clients or issues with transactions. And, you know, you're in control of how you react to situations and being in the proper mindset is really important. Now you mentioned, you know, working with professionals, having conversations with friends and family. Um, what kinds of professionals have you found really effective for your life and for your business? And, and in the conversations with them or with friends and family, what were those conversations about? What were the questions that you were asking or them or trying to get answers for? You know, as well, like as far as life in general, you know, just finding a therapist that you can talk to um, or friends that you feel you can be open enough when you say, you know, I feel that I might react to certain situations this way. How do you think I could have handled it better? Or, um, you know, always, always surround yourself with people that you admire and that you think conduct themselves in ways that are admirable to you. Like all of my friends are amazing and I, and they're my friends on purpose. Like I got to choose them and say, you bring out the best in me, so I wanna learn from you. And as far as real estate, it's just having good mentors. You know, my first brokerage, it was for a lot of the time, just me and my broker and being able to really sit down and, and ask questions all the time about, am I doing this right? How do I do this? What would you do here? Um, how do I grow? And then when I chose to go to a bigger brokerage, the level of support just, exponentially grew and the amount of people that I have to look up to and that can mentor me there is is amazing I I really did level up with some of the best agents in in my local area so that's a big um a big thing for agents is picking brokerage uh picking the broker you know like what what is it that makes a good brokerage and it's probably a little bit different for people but you went through that change. You had a great change. I know realtors think about changing to help them. So maybe walk, speak to, imagine if I'm an agent, speak to them like, why, why should you change a brokerage? How do you figure out what's a good brokerage for you? How do you know if it's the right move after the fact? You know, ultimately for me, the, the shocking thing was pure and simple values where my values shared with my brokerage down to the very core of my own personal being. And when I switched brokerages, not only were the values shared, but the resources were there, the support was there. Um, it, was, it was efficiency tools that I'd never had before. And, you know, I mean, there's so many different reasons for being at different types of brokerages and there's pros and cons to each one. For me, when I was ready to take the next step and grow, having a lot of automated and efficiency tools behind me, it was really what I needed. So um, there's certainly nothing wrong with having a smaller brokerage, uh, mm -hmm. just depending on your type of business. Okay, so let's, let's back up and, and help people get to know you a little bit. Um, kind of what's, what's your story and, and why did you become a realtor? Yeah, so my story is kind of interesting because um, my degrees are actually in geology and um, I did environmental work for a really long time, but I got tired of doing that. And I didn't like kind of who our clients were and how the work went about. And I just needed to change. And I knew my, the broker that I went with uh, through volunteering. So again, it was a value driven kind of a thing. And we were both really keen on focusing on environmental issues and and kind of sustainability in our, in our world. And um, <clears throat> when, I, when I approached him, when we started talking about potentially me becoming a realtor, uh, I, my opinion of realtors was really low. And it, and it could be just because like of the experiences that I had personally, but I really felt 
not treated well Mm -hmm. as a client from multiple realtors that I had worked with in the past. And I knew I could do better and treat my clients with the respect that was needed during those transactions. So before we, before we get into some strategies and tactics, um, th- this word values comes up a lot. It's already come up a bunch. And sometimes I take for granted you know, realtors listening in, like they might be like, well, what are my, what, what are values? What are my values? What should they be? You know, so how did you, um, what are values to you and, and how did you kind of figure out what they were and then figure out what, the, it was in the brokerages to make sure it aligned. Yeah. And you know, that's, it's a really hard question. It takes a lot of time and, and a lot of realtors are busy a lot. They're either working a lot with transactions or they're, you know, trying to split the time between family and real estate. You have to make the time to do this work. It's very important. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just dig in. And uh, for example, for me, um, like I've, I've just been guided through, through life, just trying to really focus on, am I providing the best person I can possibly be to the world? Mm-hmm. Um, and just trying to purposefully work on myself over time. Just that's been like my whole life. I've tried to better myself. And when it came to um, really diving down, I knew, I knew there was a conflict with my old brokerage. And when I moved over to the new one, it, they just talk about it all the time. It is so important to have these values. We are community driven. We give back. We live here. We give here, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And, and we were guided through different types of um, exercises and we get to talk about what's most important to us. Mm-hmm. And really for me, it comes down to integrity and um, dependability and reliability. That's, that's kind of just the basis of who I am and who I want to be in the world. So how do your clients experience your values, experience integrity, experience the alignment with you and your brokerage? Yeah, um, I think for me, it's very important to be very straightforward and to make sure that I'm very transparent in transactions. Because for me, I had a lot of distrust of, of realtors and the process of buying and selling homes. There was so much I didn't understand and uh, my other agents never explained it to me while I was going through transactions. So it was, it's really important for me to just make sure I explain things. I mean, it could be over and over and over, uh, explaining things that I don't care. I will tell somebody 10 times the same thing in a different way if they need to hear it another way so that they understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. They should never feel like they're being taken advantage of or that um, a transaction isn't to their benefit. Like buying and selling homes is is so much money. It's people's huge possessions. It could be their their life savings going into a home. They need to know that that person is fighting for them. And that is who who I am for. Now, one of the things you talk about in your book, which I think is so important for the lifestyle, like... If you want to be successful, you have to be happy, cons- you know, not all the time, but you have to have some consistency in being happy and in, in the work that you do. So you want to keep doing it over and over and over again, year after year. That's how you have a 10, 20 year career that is consistently growing and successful and profitable because you're enjoying your process, which means you as a person have to have certain rules, you have to have certain boundaries, you have to have you know, this is how I'm going to operate. And it may actually push some people away. And you talk about this in your chapter, which I think is really important for people. Um, But I think some people almost take it the wrong way sometimes, where the communication of those rules and those boundaries to the prospect or to the client Mm -hmm. can sometimes come off wrong. And so how do you do it? How have you learned to do it so that you get to have the life that you want? while making sure the client is happy Mm -hmm. that they're not able to text you and DM you and work with you at all hours of the day and do or say whatever they want with you and whatever. Right. So talk to me about how you communicate that those boundaries and those rules um, to clients. Yeah. I think it's really important just when we start talking about uh, working together 
in, in whatever level it is. I work with a lot of my friends too. And so they're used to being able to just have access to me at any time. But especially over like during the COVID time, I, we were just so thoughtful and purposeful about how we led our everyday life. Like I would put my phone away pretty much at 8 p.m. every night and I'm not answering emails. I'm not, you know, reading texts. I'm not looking at things that can wait until tomorrow morning. Um, and then I really take the time for activities that I want to do. And the fact that I'm at a much bigger brokerage now, there's a lot more help. So if I really do have a client that is in a, in a really tight spot and needs something immediately, there's 500 other agents that I can call that I know will help, help me and help my client. Mm. Um, okay. So let's, let's get into some of the other things you said that I want you to expand upon um, that I know some agents maybe struggle with mm -hmm. um, either doing these things to grow their business or thinking this way. Um, Cause I know the benefit of thinking in abundance that there is, as you say, there is enough business for everyone. And in real estate, that can very well be a tough thing to think about because there really is, you know, a certain amount of transactions that happen in an area every year. And it's not changing all that much. I mean, I know it's increased a lot in this last year. I think we're going to have a record number of transactions because of COVID and stuff. But for the most part, there is a finite number. And so how do you think like that? If I'm a realtor questioning, like, I don't think that's true. I think there's a pie and I want my sliver to be as big as possible and others to be smaller. How do you think about that phrase that there is an abundance of success for everyone? Um, I think it's really important to start that thought process with gratitudes and to be really grateful for what you do have and to find the joy and the, the gratitude in every day. So I just want to start with that. But you know, it's, it's really important too, I think, to write down your goals. And if there's a goal that you want to meet, then you write it down and then you can back it up and you have a process to get to that goal. And you have measurables every day that you can measure to see if you have checked all those boxes of those tasks that you need to do on a daily basis. You know, we know what we're supposed to do, right? Yeah. Make calls, check our clients, send letters, blah, blah, blah. So just make sure you're doing those things. And if you're not making those measurables that you've worked back from your numbers, then you know what to do to get to those numbers. I don't need to have $20 billion, you know, to go out to space. I just want to make sure that I can be a productive member of my community and take care of people if needed, and then take care of the financial stability of my own home. So mm -hmm. I don't, I don't need everything. I think, really what's, I think what's interesting that we, you know, we, this is another thing to talk about another time is the idea that um, is success doing a hundred plus transactions a year and pulling your hair out and not seeing your family and friends and kids right. and having all the stress of building a team and spending all this money on advertising, which may not work. And then all you know, like, is, is that success? Because if, if realtors focused on, lifestyle as well as income together then it ends up actually creating more opportunity for everyone and probably uh less you know problems with agents who are feeling like they need to go be this mega producer and mega team and yeah mega everything um, i mean it would be it would be amazing if i was a you know a mega agent but you know maybe someday, but my goals right now are to really enjoy my life. And again, you know, you have to find those gratitudes in every day. And that's really what life is about. You know, when it comes down to it, did I close a hundred houses this year? Probably not, but did I make some really good friends? And, and did I have some really good times with my friends and family? Um, and was I able to pay for that, you know, nice meal I had? Yep. yep. Check, yep. check. Can I afford our home? Yep. I'm good. No, it's, uh, you know that story about the fisherman? You ever hear about the the 
there's that old pro you know proverb story or whatever about the fisherman who some big city slicker says oh my god we got to build you this big fishing business he's like why i'm just a happy fisherman i get to fish i make my money i see my family my friends he's like no there's opportunity and then he builds this massive fishing business and almost dies from a health failure and relationships almost die and everybody finally makes it and then once he now has a successful fishing business he just goes back to fishing every day and hanging out with friends and family which is what he was doing in the beginning <laughs> and so he did this whole journey to stress himself out all the time to really at the end of the day just get back to what he was doing um and and i know i've experienced that where there's all most of us do not need the amount of money we think we need Right. And, and so then it's like, okay, well, let's hit that number, but then let's now maximize life and yeah. maximize experiences and stuff like that. And when it comes down to it too, realtors, like our, our end goal is to be able to work together mm-hmm. for a win-win for our clients. Like I want to sell this house to your client who wants to buy this house. Yep. So we shouldn't be beating each other down. I don't know. That just doesn't seem like a good process to me. Now, one of the things that you do um, that some agents uh, don't is you work with business owners. Yeah. And um, one, you've experienced the benefits of that. So I'd love for you to talk about that um, because realtors should be working with homeowners. Why am I working with business owners? I'm a realtor. Um, and I think once people realize, oh, wow, here's this great resource of people to help me with my business. But in order to get their help, I actually need to do stuff for them. I need to help them. I need to give value to them, which then gets you thinking about what, what do businesses need and want? Mm-hmm. And I think you've learned a lot about what do local businesses and local professionals need and want? How can a realtor go help them? And then what are the benefits of now going and doing that? Um, please, yeah, share with everyone listening. Sure. I think a lot of people forget that our local businesses are owned by our neighbors. They are people that live in our community. They are our family. They are the people who keep our community going. They feed us, they clothe us, they provide us with, you know, services and, and everything you can possibly imagine. And for me, um, being able to be a part of their own marketing um, to help support them is, is really great. Uh, even before I ca- became a realtor, I did everything I could to support our local businesses and get the word out. And did you know that this business opened and, um, and, and did activities like that. So now being able to bring them in in a whole other way is, is so amazing. And we become friends and partners and they're part of my network. So. What do you find businesses are struggling with these days? These days, oh my gosh, I mean, just the uncertainty of where things are going. You know, what if somebody, you know, one of our local businesses, uh, one of the staff members who was vaccinated came down with COVID and it's like, what do we do? Well, they shut down for a week Um, and that, you know, nobody wants that. They need to make money and continue their business, but there's so much uncertainty or, or is the business that we had pre-COVID coming back or how do we serve, you know, do we continue with like, for example, a restaurant, do we keep doing takeout or are we focusing more on dine-in again? Or do we need to keep this takeout? Everybody's become accustomed to takeout or services. Um, you know, what level of getting in people's faces is okay. You know, people maybe who do lashes or personal one-on-one fitness training. Um, it's still just so much uncertainty. And I think that that's really scary for a lot of business owners. Now, um, Kathy may not admit to this because she's very humble, but um, we have all these clients who do these interviews. And so it, realtors go, well, I know, you know people have these issues, they have these challenges, COVID, you know, what can I do? What, I'm just a realtor. And um, you have had multiple interviews where you interview a local business and hundreds to thousands of people have seen, locals have seen that interview, which got that business hundreds or thousands of new eyeballs on their business. Um, so what have you what have you found you have been able to do to contribute to the you know prosperity of the small business um, that you think other agents they may not think they could, but they really can? 
you know, it's kind of, I, I think it's just part of the ripple effect. You know, you tell two people and then they tell two people and it helps support the business. So really just using your own personal voice to help amplify those of others is huge. And you've built up this trust with your network. They come to you for recommendations, whether it be plumbers or AC or restaurants. And now we have this avenue that we can share the, the coolest businesses and the neatest stories of these people um, and these businesses that people didn't even know existed, like a little neighborhood frame shop, you know, that nobody knew was there because it wasn't in, in the strip center or the guy that fixes amplifiers, you know, it's little businesses that people didn't know. And then they're like, oh, I didn't know that was there. Or, oh, I, I wanted to try that restaurant, but I was nervous. It, but now, now I, I hear it's good. So I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. And I, and I think that really amplifying what businesses were doing during, especially the intensive shutdowns that we had during COVID, knowing that you could go pick up items from, from different businesses, like a, even bars, we were able to do drinks to go here. It really helped sustain some of these folks through the toughest times. Now, you know, I can, I, I know realtors when they hear this, they go, I mean, that sounds nice, but like, I don't have time. You know, I want to do that, but I don't have time, which to me means that they're not understanding the value of that time. And so maybe you can talk about the benefits of spending your time doing this. Um, And that can kind of parlay into, you know, one of the final questions I want to ask, which how do you spend your time? (laughs) What, what, What do you do? Um, where do you allocate it? Because everyone yeah. has time. They just need to decide what they spend their time on and what they prioritize and what they don't. A hundred percent. So let, let's, let, let's talk about like the agent who's like, it sounds nice to help my community, help the small businesses and do this stuff, but I just don't have time. Yeah. So the biggest thing that we do as realtors is bring value to people's lives. It could be in any form or fashion, you know, helping them through a transaction or helping them find a plumber. And the same thing applies to your, your local businesses, because again, they're your community, they're your family. That is part of our local, you know, financial stability in our, in our towns is our local businesses. So what more value could you provide to your community than letting people know about these businesses? So um, as far as the way I spend my time, I mean, I'm pretty good at wasting time. I'm not going to lie. Like I am no time block expert, um, but having some processes in place uh, in place is, is key um, and having pretty regular schedules is, is really good. Um, like I learned, I learned some really good things in Atomic Habits. I should go back and revisit it actually. And even in deep work that I'm reading now, he's like, quit social media. You don't need that. Although as realtors, we would say, yes, we do, but just really be purposeful about how you spend your time. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to waste a half hour or an hour doing something that really could be spent chatting with a local business. It's so easy. No, I, I, I I would agree. I mean, social media is a tool and I think realtors should use it to make their clients happy. Realtors should use it to talk to people and realtors should use it to give value to people. But that's it. It's not yeah. for browsing. It's not for creeping. You know, it's not for you know just checking your news. You know, um, and shouldn't be where you get your news. Because because yeah, the, the, there's um, and and you don't need to be an influencer superstar. You know, everyone is allured by that. Yeah. And what I think is is sad is everyone talks about it and the people who are selling courses and things about services about social media are like, you got to do it, you got to do it, you got to go big. And it's like, listen, that's like someone saying you got to go become a Hollywood superstar. Like very yeah. small percentage of people will actually become influencers and everyone else is going to die trying. And so we should stop dying and, and start, you know, using it differently or spending time in, in other ways. Yep. Um, Cause I know a lot of people that waste time on social media. Oh, so I look at a lot of cats on the internet. <laughs> um, why do you think agents should get this book becoming a local leader? You know, you have your story, you, you know, the other agents um, in our group who've written the stories. Um, when you think about, 
if you were to do real estate all over again, you know, you're in your first 10 years, you're struggling, you're trying to figure it out. And here's this book, Becoming a Local Leader. It's not, mm-hmm. hey, how to buy advertising and make a bunch of money, how to build a million dollar real estate business. It's about becoming a local leader to yeah. grow your real estate business. Why should I pick that up as an agent? I mean, as an agent, you are supposed to be the expert in your area. You're supposed to know what's going on, what's coming up, what's being built, what different neighborhoods are like. You are the local leader. What value can you provide to your community, your sphere, your clients? Um, Ultimately, I think that that's the biggest thing. And I think that's probably what I struggled with when I first started. Um, And we all have different levels of self-doubt and what we actually can and can't provide and what we're good at and just having the confidence of, of knowing that what you have is something that is something to give is so important and having faith in that and in, in yourself, I think is, is the first step. Now I know a lot of agents, um, cause there's, there's uh, one of the authors in his chapter, he says, uh, you know, there's Baskin Robbins big thing is 31 flavors of ice cream and there's hundreds of flavors of realtors. Um, and so there's going to be realtors. And that's the thing is you, you see these again, people on TV and p- people in the big stages and stuff. And so a lot of agents I think are like, well, that's not really me. Um, and I, and I'm excited that a lot of agents might read the story, your story, or other stories and, and uh, go, that sounds more like me. And so if they read your story and they go, hey, I, I feel like I resonate a lot with Kathy and how she does business, mm-hmm. um, how she thinks, I have a similar story to her, similar interest to her, and they want to get in touch with you, either to learn from you um, or to, to build a re- relationship with you as a agent to agent referrals are big. Um, yeah. How can they get in contact with you? Yeah, get in contact with me. Um, uh, you can find my park bench site. I have um, a couple of zip codes that are mine, all mine, and um, or my personal websites. I've got, you know, Kathy Sikolik, Realty.com. I've got homes in Mueller.com. Um, you can find me through RealtyAustin.com, my brokerage. You can search for me. So I it should be pretty findable. Uh, and I would love to talk to anybody. I love, love chatting and um, especially finding other realtors that feel the same way and have the same values. Definitely up for referral network all the time. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time for this interview and being a part of this book project. Um, we really do hope that uh, agents, when you focus on being a leader of your community, the real estate business will come everyone has experienced that. Um, If you focus on relationships, you focus on giving value first, people will use you, they will refer you. Um, And I think, you know, we need to get agents to stop because when they do advertising, they become transactional. And transactional is the process by which technology deems to replace. Because it should, it should absolutely replace transactions Mm -hmm. with people. If you're just transactional in the commodity, let's let's replace you. And that's really not the highest, best use of the realtor. The realtor, as you said, is Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, you know, all these sites rolled into one um, and, and with a deeper understanding of the people and the businesses. So Thank you for being a part of this book project. Thank you for the interview. Um, And anyone listening, if you want to check out more interviews, subscribe to the YouTube channel, check out the other interviews and get the book, Becoming a Local Leader, so that you can be a leader in your community and have a great real estate business. Thank you.